Recently, I passed the AWS Certified Cloud Practitioner exam in under a week. That's all right. What's good, YouTube? If you're watching this video, you successfully made it to layer seven of that OSI model, where we give you nothing but that application you can apply directly to your life. I'm your host, Dewan. Recently, I passed the AWS Certified Cloud Practitioner exam in under a week. In this video, I'm gonna share with you my exam experience, provide you with seven resources on how I passed the exam. And you'll wanna stick around to the end of the video because I'm gonna share with you how you can gain technical resources, some really cool merch, mentorship, and a ton of networking opportunities. Now let's talk about my exam experience. In December, I joined AWS as a senior cloud networking developer advocate, and I'm extremely excited about this opportunity. But one of the prerequisites for my position was to get the AWS Certified Cloud Practitioner certification. And surprisingly, I was able to prepare and pass the certification in under a week. Now in this video, I wanna cover in detail seven questions on how I passed the AWS CCP. Let's talk about the first question. What is the AWS Certified Cloud Practitioner? This certification is the foundational level certification for AWS. Achieving this certification will provide you with cloud fluency and foundational AWS knowledge. For me, AWS, the services, the AWS console, all of this was brand new to me. Now granted, I do have another vendor cloud certification, and I believe that certification helped me prepare for this certification. Now the exam itself, in my opinion, wasn't too hands-on technical. And you can review the exam overview, which we'll talk about here in a moment to find out exactly what's on the exam. But in my opinion, it was more so, like I mentioned, understanding what the cloud is, understanding AWS and the services that are offered. The second question you may have when preparing for the exam is how much the exam costs. As of this video, the cost of the exam is $100. Question number three, how many questions are on the exam? There are 65 questions on the exam, multiple choice and multiple response. Question four, does the certification expire? Yes, you have to recertify every three years. Question five, do you need a lab for the exam? No but I always think it's good to gain hands-on experience so you can really understand the technology that you're learning. But I have heard of people that only read the AWS white papers as well as watch free YouTube videos and still are able to pass the exam. And that's okay. But for me, in order for me to really understand the technology and understand the AWS services, I had to dive into the AWS console and experience setting up my AWS account, creating my first VPC, launching a EC2 instance, and setting up an internet gateway so I could have internet access, just so I could visually see what I'm learning and put my hands on it so I could understand it. So yes, I did lab every day for the certification. Question six, how long did it take me to become AWS certified? As I mentioned, the AWS certified cloud practitioner certification was a required certification for my current job role. And so I scheduled my exam on December 13th and I actually sat for my exam test on December 19th. So that's a total of about six days. On December 13th, which was a Monday, through that Wednesday, which is three days, I spent about 12 hours reading AWS white papers, along with taking notes and creating note cards. And then from that Thursday to about that Sunday morning, I watched videos, study my note cards and I lab. So that was about a total of 25 hours. In total, I spent 37 hours in that six days preparing for the certification exam. Question seven, and this may be the most important question to you, what resources did I use for the certification? The first resource that I used was the Cloud Practitioner Exam Overview. This will answer all of your questions about the exam and provide you a link to where you can schedule your tests. The second resource that I use is the Cloud Practitioner Exam Guide. Now for any certification that I prepare for, I always start with the exam guide. This provides you with an overview of the information that will be on the exam. So in other words, this will let you know everything that you will be tested on when you take the exam. The third resource that I used was the overview of 
Amazon Web Services white paper. This white paper provides you with a complete background on AWS, the services that are offered, as well as an understanding of the cloud and some really great information that will help prepare you for your exam. I highly recommend spending a couple hours reviewing, reading, and going over this white paper. The fourth resource is another PDF, and that's how AWS pricing works. This will give you a complete breakdown of how AWS pricing works across many of its services. Number five is a quick read, and that's compare AWS support plans. On this site, you will get a breakdown of the four different types of support plans on AWS. Number six, Wiz Labs practice exam questions. Now, this is not free. And also Wiz Labs has not sponsored this video and no affiliate links are in the description. I use Wiz Labs to prepare for the exam. The thing that I liked about the platform was that as I would go through each practice question, they would provide an explanation of the right or wrong answers for the question. And I really enjoyed that. Number seven, I use Cloud Academy's video course on AWS Cloud Practitioner Certification Preparation. And unfortunately, this course is free as well, but they do offer a free trial. And I gotta mention, they did not sponsor this video. And there's no affiliate link in the description, but the link is in the description for you to check it out. The thing I liked about the platform was the videos were easy to follow, as well as when I would go through the videos, they would have a lab section that required no AWS account. So you don't have to create an account to go through the course. They provide you with the account number, the username and password for their labs. So you use that information, log into the AWS console and go through their labs without the need of creating an account. And I really enjoyed that. Now, those are the resources that I use to prepare for the exam. The biggest struggle for me was really staying focused with all the distractions that are going on in my life. I started the, reading the book, The One Thing by Gary Keller, and it's really helped me prioritize to say, what's the one thing that I need to work on that's going to make everything easier in my life? And in this instance, it was the, the AWS CCP. I focused on that, made that a priority. He In the book, he talks about giving your priority four hours a day. And so I would make sure that I gave the certification at least four hours a day. And so you break that down over over six days, that's only 24 hours. So I was really giving it more, but I gave it as much time as I could because it became a priority. And so now I'm doing the same thing for the solutions architect. Four hours a day, I wake up early and the first thing I do is study for my certification. So hopefully I'll have that again soon and I'll be making a video around that as well. And I'll also be putting content out around the cloud. So if you wanna see that, let me know in the description of this video. Now that we talked about the resources that I use in my exam experience, the last thing I wanna share with you is about the AWS Community Builders Program. I'm gonna have a link in the description on how you can apply for the program, but let's talk about some of the benefits that I think that will really help you advance in your career. The first for joining the community is the technical resources that you'll gain from AWS. The second is gonna be mentorship. If you're on your cloud journey, you're new to your cloud journey, a lot of times you may feel confused, you may feel lost, you may be working on a project and just have questions. The AWS Community Builders Program is a great community to be a part of to get that mentorship that can help you advance your skill set or advance your career in general. Number three is the networking opportunities. One of the things that's helped me get to where I am is networking and just putting myself out there. Some people call it building a brand. I just look at it as being authentic and sharing my experiences. So joining the AWS Community Builders Program is a great way for you to network and for lack of a better words, build your brand. So if you're someone that's contributing blog posts, you're putting out information around the cloud and you're helping other people advance their career in the cloud and you're just excited about the journey, I recommend applying for the program, joining the community and continue being an inspiration to help others. If you're interested in applying, I'll leave a link in the description of this video. Thank you all for viewing. If you thought this video was helpful, like, and subscribe to my channel and I will catch you all on the next one. Peace.